creative Red Earth Theatre on virtual tour. And we've got Alex Stafford with us today, who's going to do her second session on theatre design. The last session was amazing, and um, so I'm really looking forward to what's going to happen this time. So, Alex, here we are. Thank you very much. Thank you. That's lovely, Amanda. I'm just going to... Uh, oh, I think I need to pin me now. Brilliant. Hello. So, um, as Amanda says, um, I'm Alex and I'm a theatre lighting designer. Um, and today I thought we would talk a little bit more about uh, lighting design and how we use lighting in theatre to help us tell stories. Um, and I also have um, a couple of ideas for um, an activity using light that I hope you might like to try later on. So as a, a lighting designer, uh, working with the creative team, um, one of the things that we need to think about, that I need to think about, is how I can light the scenery. So how I can light the set for a theatre show, which is designed by a set designer, such as Laura, who's been running some of these sessions um, with us as well. Most theatre sets, so when you go to the theatre and you go in to see a show, uh, most theatre sets in a, a traditional theatre, um, they sit in a black box. So when you walk into the auditorium, what you see in front of you um, is a stage, which is often a, a black box with black curtains around it. Um, and that creates um, a picture frame. So, so then the set is a picture in this box. And one of the things that we need to do um, from a lighting point of view is we need to look at how we paint that picture in the box. Now, one of the important things of uh, the set design for me to think about is to look at what's behind the set. So what's at the back of the set at the back of the theatre? Quite often, this is um, what we call back cloths. So there'll be um, some fabric that goes across the whole back of the set. And sometimes it might be white. Um, if it's white, then we often call it, it's got a great name, we call it a cyclorama which is a brilliant word, I always think. Um, and a cyclorama, it means a circular picture. So a cyclorama is a white cloth that goes all the way around the back of the stage and it gives us this screen that we can um, paint with colour or that we can see the set and the actors in front of. So it might be a psyche, a white psyche, or the cloth at the back of the set might be coloured. It might be blue like a sky cloth, or sometimes it might be black. And um, whatever it is, it's something that we can alter with light. So it's one of the things that we can use uh, to help us to paint pictures with light and to tell the story. I'm going to um, just share my screen now and just show you um, a few examples of some shows so that I can just explain a little bit more what I mean. So, oh, Amanda, this is saying that I can't screen share because you, the host has disabled it. Oh, let me, let me... Um... Try it now. Okay. Oh yeah, perfect. Yeah. There we go. That would have been interesting. Lovely. Thank you, Amanda. Okay, can we all see that? Give me a thumbs up if you can see the picture. Brilliant. Okay. So, so this first picture um, is a picture of a set design by Laura for a Red Earth Theatre show, which was called The Remarkable Adventures of Oliver Twist. So this was um, a production based on the novel um, by Charles Dickens about Oliver Twist. Um, and as you see, Laura's design for, um, for this show was a very beautiful little stage within a stage. So Laura's design actually looks like the stage and a theatre, and then this used to then sit in the th on the theatre stage. So it's like a, a, a box within a box. So you can see that it's got um, a raised platform at the front. So let me just play with my cut. So you've got a raised area here, which was a stage area for the actors to perform on. And then you have this, this arch here, so this frame that goes up and around there, which is like in a the theatre where we often have these, which is another fantastic word. This is called a proscenium arch. So this again, this is a, a, an arch that frames the stage so that we look at the picture behind it. And with this one, if we have a look behind, there's lots of, well, in front of it, there's lots of lovely bits of scenery. There's a cart here, there's a box here, there's an easel here with a, a sign on it. And then at the back here, so we were talking about the back of the set, you can see that there's, um, there's a cloth and then there's these lovely shapes which form like a sunburst at the back. So, 
when I look at this also in terms of what I could also use for lighting, you can see that Laura put in these little golden shells at the front of the stage. So they're what we call footlights. Now, before there was electricity, when you went to the theatre to, um, to see a show, so we're talking over 100 years ago now, um, most of the time, a lot of the lighting was done from this position, which we call the footlights. So there would be perhaps candles in these shells, or sometimes there would literally be um, burning gas. So there'd be like, um, like a live flame, which sounds really dangerous now, but that's how they used to light the actors. So the actors would be lit from these footlights. And I don't know if you can also see here, there's like a rows of little red lights around the arch. And these are like, if you've been to, um, if you've been to the fairground and been on a, a ride at the fair, these are little lights that, um, that are often used in fairgrounds. And they've got another fantastic name, but it's a, the day for fantastic names. They're called a cabochon, and it's like a special type of light which goes around the rides. So all of these things um, have been um, put in as part of the set design, but they're all things which are going to help me to light the show. So let's have a little look at, so with the remarkable tale of Oliver Twist. So just to show you again, so I don't know if you remember, but when we were talking about lighting before, uh, where Laura, the designer, makes a model box, a miniature model of the set so that everyone can see what the show will look like. Uh, part of my job is to draw a lighting plan. And that shows the technicians who are going to work with me and myself where I'm going to put my lights and what they're going to do. So this is my lighting plan for Oliver Twist. And I don't know if you can see on the plan, the same shape, the shape of the stage that was in Laura's model box is on my lighting plan. You can see there's that barrow that was at the side there. And you can also see I've got some little lights at the front here, which are where the footlights were. So I've shown where all my lights are going to go to help me to light the show. And again, it tells us about colors that I'm going to use um, and, and what the lanterns are going to do. So what all the different lights are going to do. So then just have a little look at some of the photographs of the show. So the first picture I showed you was a picture of the model box for the show, but these are some actual photographs of what the show looked like um, with the actors and when we'd finished lighting it. So, um, so you can see here that uh, the colours of the light can help to set a different mood or let us think that we're in a, in a different location. So, and especially the back cloth look becomes really important. So down here, we've got a really strong blue on the back there and not so much light from the front, which means that we see this um, kind of living picture that the actors are making here. We see it against the colored backdrop with another actor in the front here, look. And then in this one, we've changed the backdrop so it's a completely different color. So perhaps this one fits, feels more like it's daytime. So these two actors are doing, playing out a scene in the daytime and we're using colors at the back of the stage to help us to tell that story. And you can see this one quite clearly, the beautiful little footlight shells. And also in this one, look, the little red lights that we talked about are lit up. So all part of telling the story is using the different parts of the set to, um, so that we can create different moods. And then again, this is another picture from the show. And this was one of the, there's some lovely puppets, look, Emma made of these skeletons, look. This was set in the funeral parlor. So this was, um, this was nighttime, but it turned into like a song and dance number. So a really happy, funny number with these lovely puppets. And for that, again, you can see we lit up the little red lights. And this time at the back, we've got a really dark blue. So it might feel like it's nighttime or because it's a purpley blue, it feels a bit like a kind of a, a musical number. And you can see that Joey, who's the actress here, who was playing Oliver, her face is being lit up by the lights that are coming from, from down here. So all the different lights in different parts of the stage are doing different things to whole, paint this whole colourful picture. So that's, um, that's one example of how different we can make things look just by changing the colours at the back of the set. Here's another example. So this is another Red Earth Theatre show. This was Hansel and Gretel, which, is, um, uh, which was a story based on the fairy tale of Hansel and Gretel. I don't know if people know that story, um, but Hansel and Gretel um, get taken into the wood at night. So with this set, we've got a black background. So no color here, it's a black 
black cloth behind and a black floor. And again, we've got these, uh, this lovely uh, painting on the dance floor that might look like um, stepping stones or big pebbles or a path for Hansel and Gretel to follow. And we've got some tubs and we've got some ribbons. So what we've got here, um, and uh, we've got um, ways of using black behind the set. And in fact, you can see on the photographs here. So it makes the, act, makes the actors look very different when they haven't got colour behind them. In some ways, they stand out more because they've got black behind them. And I don't know if you can see here that we've got like little shining lights behind. So the idea with that is that maybe it looks like the night sky when you look out at night and it's really dark and you can see all the stars. And because that's what it looks like, we call that a star cloth. So sometimes if we've got a set that's got black behind it, we can put lots of little tiny lights actually into the cloth and we can create a star cloth. And sometimes that can feel quite magical or quite dramatic. So here we've got a, you know, a nighttime scene with a little star cloth. But again, even then with just a black background, we can make pictures look really different. So in Hansel and Gretel, when they get to the witch's house, which is that house that's made of gingerbread, everything is colourful. So even with black behind, we're using colour and light, we can still make it feel like we're in a different place. Um, and this time, perhaps again, look, we've got the, the, the witch doing a groovy dance here and the beautiful little um, model of a gingerbread house. So we can make things feel very different. Okay, so we might have coloured cloths behind the set. We might have black behind the set. And then there's other ways that we might use what's behind the set. So again, we had a little look at this set last time. So this is for Red Earth Theatre's production of Mirror Mirror, which was based on the Snow White story. And again, another beautiful design from Laura. And again, this time we've got only little bits of kind of back cloths. So we've got the set, but there's only parts of them that I can change the color on. But we can still do lots of different things. We could still put color back here, or we could use um, here where we're lighting it and we're seeing the shape of a cutout that's been put in front of it. Or over here, we're playing with shadow. So we're looking at what we can create with light behind a cloth when you've got people doing action with their hands or with their bodies or with other shapes. So there's lots of different things that we can do with light, which is just about the back of the stage. Okay, so let me just check. I think that's, oh, that's as far as we need to go for a moment. Let me just stop that screen share for a moment and pop back to you. Okay, so what I wanted to do today is I wanted to follow on from an idea that Laura used um, when she did her session recently, which was about making your own miniature stage. So about making a, a little box of your own, which is um, a stage box and creating some scenery within it or putting um, some people in it to tell. Um, Laura was talking about you telling your own stories about what you're doing at the moment or what you'd like to be doing at the moment and using little bits of scenery to go into the boxes um, to, to show how to do that. If you missed that, then you can see that video and you can see all of these sessions. If you go to Red Earth Theatre's uh, YouTube page, you'll find that there's, um, there's videos of all these sessions. So you can, you can play catch up if you've missed it. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to pop back and I'm just going to show you on the screen share again. I'm just going to show you Laura kindly sent me some pictures of the lovely model boxes that she and Rosie and Martha, her daughters, made when we were doing this a couple of weeks ago. So these are some pictures of the model boxes that, um, that Laura made. And again, it, the idea was very beautifully simple, was just to get a cardboard box and without it, take the front off it and to cut some slits in the edges of the box and then to draw pictures um, or cut things out so that it's like scenery going into the theatre space. So here, look, there's uh, pictures of um, some little girls and some trees. So we're basically creating little scenes within a box. And that was the idea that, um, that Laura used so that, um, so that you could have uh, lots of fun creating stories. Now, if you've made that box before and you've still got that box, then uh, later on, uh, you might like to use that again, because I'm going to show you something else that we can do with either with these boxes or we can start again with a different box or if we didn't have boxes in the first place. So um, what we're going to do is let me just pop back off there again. So <clears throat> what you need for this is um, we need to find a little box. 
So again, um, I found here a box, and actually mine, like Laura's was, was a box um, of uh, ink cartridges. Um, and it's really nice, if you've got one that's got a lid on it, then that's great because you can open the lid out and it means you've got like a bigger stage area. But if you haven't got a lid, that's fine. You'll just have a slightly smaller box, okay? So what we did here was opened up the front of the box um, and, um, and so that you've got an open area and this becomes our stage box, okay? But what I've then also done now is I've cut a hole in the back of my box. So I've cut a hole in the back of my theatre wall, which we don't get to do very often. So very, very carefully, what we need to do here is we need to just draw a shape in the back of the box and we need to cut it out. So you can cut it out with scissors, or if you've got um, a grown up with you, then you could perhaps use a, a craft knife to cut out the back of your theatre box. And then all I've done there is put a couple little bits of blue tack. So now we've got a box that's got a completely uh, open back in it. Now you might want to, if you want to, you could paint it black. I found some black cardboard just to put on the floor, so I've got like a black stage floor, um, but you could paint the inside black if you wanted to, or you could just leave it how it is. So this then means that we can set up um, some scenes inside your box. So what I'm just going to do now is, yes, brilliant, I can see that some of you have still got the boxes that you made before, which is wonderful. So perhaps you might later on like to cut a hole out of the back of those boxes so that you can do the next thing that we're about to do. So what I'm just going to do now is, I'm just going to pop this down for a moment, and now I just need to set up the box so that I can show you what we can do with it. So I'm just going to move my computer a bit further away, like that. And hopefully I can just lift this up here. Just needed it to be a little bit higher so that you could see what we were doing. Okay, let me see that, all right. Brilliant. So, oh, one of the things we're going to do is, <clears throat> for this one, if again, if now we get, all we need now is a plain sheet of paper. And if I pop the plain sheet of paper behind my box, and that's where the blue tack comes in, but if you haven't got blue tack, just a bit of sellotape. So I'm going to put a white backdrop into my model box. So when we were talking about this before, if I say this is called a cyclorama, so I'm going to put a white psych in the back of my model box. And then what I'm going to do next is I'm going to switch off my big light up here. I've had to try and make my room really dark again to try and make this work. So I'm just going to switch off my big light. And I'm going to get, again, I'm going to get a phone torch. Now this could be an angle poise, but if you've got a phone torch or you can borrow one, then, um, then this is quite a good way of doing it. And I'm just gonna prop my torch up behind my box. Now again, because this, my room's quite light, I've tried to make it as dark as possible, but it's a beautiful sunny afternoon out there, but hopefully you'll still be able to see. So, I've got a little model, again, I'm using um, some figures that I found around our house, but you could use anything that you can find. So I've got some little Lego figures. This is my little lady who I think looks a little bit like the little girl in the book that we're going to be looking at. So I'm just going to pop her in the box at the front. So like you did before, you could either uh, use scenery that you've drawn and cut out, or you could use objects that you find around the house. And it doesn't have to be Lego, it can be um, anything. I'll show you some other examples in a moment, but let's just set up a little scene here. So say we have our lady here, and perhaps she's going for a walk outside in, in the woods this time. And then what we can do here is that we can also, because I've got a light and then I've got a white piece of paper, if I move a figure really close up against the paper there, look, we get a shadow. So we've got a, a, a shadow of this time, look, somebody's coming in on a horse, coming to say hello. So we can create two different stories. We can create a story inside the box and we can create a second story outside the box using a light and then using shadow. So we could create a whole story here using our shadow. So perhaps there's another tree look so that we can see that this horse rider is, is riding through the forest there and perhaps will eventually come round and, and meet, with, meet with his friend so that they can, uh, they can have um, a, an adventure in the woods. So what this lets us do is it gives us a, an extra dimension and lets us play with setting up scenes. And what we can also do then is we can play with what this backdrop looks like. So that was just a plain sheet of white paper. But if for instance, oh, not my lady over, get her back. If you wanted to, 
you could look at just painting some colour onto a piece of paper. And if I swap that over, so because we've got the light behind, the light still shines through the paper, so we still get to see a lovely clear shadow of whatever we've put behind here, but we also get some colour now as well. So we're using the, the torch to light, shine through the paper to give us um, a scene there. So again, we can have oh, here's some here and we can add other things in here. So we can create, um, we can create some stories just using, um, using the torch and a piece of paper. I also found if you don't want to paint something, you might find that you could, um, I found something I could print out that had got clouds and sky on it. So again, you could use that. So you can use all sorts of different things um, to play with telling some stories using a uh, using shadow at the back of your theatre box. So that was one of my ideas about what we might do. So again, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to uh, move this back out the way just so I can now show you something else. And we'll come back to this in a minute. Lots of things to move around today. Let's move that back down there. Okay, I'm just going to pop my light back on. So that might be something that hopefully later on you guys might like to have a go at and see what stories you can, uh, you can create. And again, anything that you do and any photographs that you take, we would love to see. So Amanda will tell you at the end of the session um, how you can send those to us, but it would be really lovely to see and uh, to see what you've, uh, what you've managed to create. So <clears throat> what I wanted to do next was um, wanted uh, to, because we've been looking at um, the book called, I'll show you the book here, The Red Tree by Sean Tan, which is going to be um, the next play that we do at Red Earth Theatre. So what I wanted to do now is I wanted to look at um, a different picture from that book and then think about how that uh, might influence how we might play with lighting in the box that we've just looked at. So I'm just going to do share screen one more time so that we can have a look at the picture. Okay, so they're the boxes that we were looking at earlier. So the picture from the book that we're going to look at this time is called Sometimes You Just Don't Know What To Do. Now, can we see the words on that? Let me just, the words, I'm just going to, let me just scroll up again. There you go. So that's, that's the whole picture with the words as well. Sometimes you just don't know what you're supposed to do. But let's go back to this one because this one shows us a bit more detail. So it's a very, very beautiful picture, but it's got some quite strange things in it too. The first thing that I noticed was that I think this picture looks like a theatre stage. So you could, these got, um, looks like there's an audience sat in a darkened room, which is what we do when we go to the theatre, and we've got a little raised stage. So if you think back to that picture I showed you of the model box for Oliver Twist, that was exactly this kind of set. So it's got a raised stage, and look, this has also got little lights around the front and the side, like the footlights that we looked at before. So when I'm looking at this picture, um, I, I think it looks like a theatre stage. And then I look at the little girl, and this is the same little girl in the picture we've been looking at before, the little girl looking out the window. I think that's the same little girl. And there's a little girl on stage, but she looks quite sad. And she's actually got, you can't see it very clearly on this, but she's got a sign round her neck and it's got some words on it. Now I had to go and look these words up because they're not in English, um, but it turns out the words are in Finnish, which is the language that they speak in Finland. And she's got some words. Now I'm probably not pronouncing this right because I don't speak Finnish, but um, it says something like kuka sina ole. And apparently that means, who are you? So the little girl is asking, who am I? And there's another little sign up at the top here, which again is in Finnish, which apparently means, what are you doing here? So this picture has got lots of questions. It's got a little girl thinking about things, wondering what she might be doing, wondering what she is doing at the moment. So again, lots of questions like we're perhaps asking at the moment, perhaps wondering why things are happening, wondering what we can do. And, and some of the things that, um, that she's got around her, but they are very magical, very imaginative, very creative, but slightly strange. So there's a, there's a, 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 a figure sitting here and he's got, looks like he's got a paper bag over his head and he's playing um, some kind of trumpet type instrument. 
and I, I love this here. Look, there's a, a little figure that looks like a kind of a dinosaur, but it's got a tap as a head. So there's wonderful objects. It's very creative, very imaginative. Look, there's a bird cage here where the hen is actually part of the cage. So very beautiful, um, but slightly strange. Lots of things that you can think about. And again, I think it's um, a really good picture because it, it lets us, it thinks about creativity and imagination. And again, they're things which are really important at the moment. So if I look at this picture with my lighting designer's hat on, then I think about the fact that we're in a very dark room. So everything else is dark, which means our eye is pulled towards the, the beautiful picture and it looks like it's been lit. So it looks like that part has been quite brightly lit so we can see the detail of, of all the objects and the colours there. And I love the fact that it has also got extra little lights that are part of it. So there's a, like a floating standard lamp here, look like a floor lamp. And then there's these, as we said, there's these lovely little lights around the front, which are like the footlights. And then look, there's some candles here. So there's lots of little light sources. So again, it's very, it's very theatrical. So having looked at this for a while, I wondered if we might be able to do something like this with our miniature stage boxes that we've made. So something where the world is much more about what's inside the box than what's outside the box. So um, the last thing I wanted to show you, and again, this might be something which I hope you'd like to do later, is I'm going to set it back up again, go back to my model box and have a look what happens if we create perhaps a different type of, um, of setting inside our box. OK, so I'm just going to slide my computer away again. I need a conveyor belt for this, really. And I'm going to bring back in. My model box. In there again, Nick. And I'm going to switch off my big light. Uh, Alex, we've, we're still on the picture. Oh, good point. There we go. Well, that was good because that means you didn't get to see me setting that up, you see. That was a magic piece of uh, movement. There we go. Can we see that? Okay. So we're back to, uh, back to the model box. Thank you for that, Amanda. And I've switched my light back off just so that we can see what we're doing here. So this time, what I thought we'd do is, instead of having a coloured or a white backdrop behind our model box, I thought we would put in a black piece of card. Okay, so I'm just going to pop that in there. But what I thought we might do with that, and I just need to, is, is if we punch some holes in a black piece of card very, very carefully with um, a safety pin, a, a paper clip, or um, if, if you've got a, a parent with you, maybe with a pin, then what we can do is, can you see that we can make a twinkly, starry backdrop? So just by using a piece of black paper or card and punching holes in it, and then putting a light behind it, we can give to ourselves a magical twinkly star cross. And I don't know if you can see, look, there's three stars in the middle in a line, which I think looks like Orion's belt. So they actually look like the stars in the starry sky, okay? So that's going to be the back of our scene this time. There's a little, and if you move the light around, look, you actually get twinkly stars. So a little twinkly star cross at the back of our set but I'm just gonna to have to switch that off for a moment now, just so that I can show you the rest. I'll pop my phone back on, so my phone comes through, but my phone doesn't do quite as good twinkly twinklies of that one, unless I move it round. So let's just put the stars there, and we'll just see if we can see a couple of the stars behind. And then this time I thought we, it'd be nice to set up a scene inside with, not with, with things that we found around the house. So again, I don't know if you remember from last time, but there's my cookie cutter, in fact. And it's going to be, it's a little bit darker in the box at the moment, and I wanted to see what else we could find. So I found uh, like a whisk. So it, the picture that we've just been looking at was very magical, wasn't it? It had strange things in it. So this time I'm not using ordinary things, perhaps a little pebble or a, a shell. Or again, there's a pretty green stone there. So things that you can um, find around the house. And I found some little magnetic words, which I thought might be quite nice to have in our scene. So again, anything that you want to, and it could be things that you draw or things that you find, to make a little scene in the front there. 
And then I thought, right, if we've got our star cloth at the back, oh look, there's one star just poking through the cookie. Then perhaps, now this is something that you might have or you might not have, but these are my very favorite things in the whole world, which are little fairy lights, which are just, if you perhaps have Christmas tree lights maybe. But I thought what we could do with those, so if you remember the pictures we looked at of Laura's set, she had bits of scenery into her box. But what we can do if we've got some baby fairy lights is punch some holes in the top of our box and we can have little lights coming into the scene look. So we could have the idea of a star cloth behind and little baby lights that help us to light up our scene. Let's pop a couple more of those in there. And they can come in at different heights and they start to help to light up what's inside. And then if you do have some fairy lights, some Christmas tree lights at home that you could go and um, go and get out of the loft. I also found that we could add in a ring of lights, look, which if they sit, oh, I haven't got enough hands, let me just come round here a moment. <clears throat> Pop it round the cookie cutter, look. So perhaps we could create a little scene that's lit with fairy lights. So again, making our own little theatre that has our own little lights in it, but so we can make our, our own version. Let's put the star cloth back in, shall we? Now I've got a free hand, look. With twinkly stars. So a little living light scene. Brilliant. There we go. So hopefully, again, that will give you some ideas of something that you might like to do later on. Let me just pop this light back on. I think that's about me, Amanda. Well, thank you very, very much. Gosh, I think that's quite magical. I, um, I'm just going back to me um, to, for the video, but I'm sure everybody else can still see that. That's really, really beautiful ideas, um, Alex. Thank you so much. And I hope, um, hope that's given everybody who's joined us an I a couple of ideas of um, how to put it all together. That's really, really magical. I think everybody's going to be diving into the... Um, into the Christmas box to have a look and see what they can magic up. Um, so, um, just before we go, uh, uh, Alex is right that we are collecting stuff. So, if you make anything, if you if you adapt your box from Laura's session or you make your own box and and do anything, do let us know by giving us sending us some photographs or sending us some drawings of what you've done. Or even a little bit of a movie, if you've got something, you know, if you've got characters and horses going by in the background, uh, just take a little movie of it and send it to us at calmandcreative at redearththeatre.com. I'll say that again. It's calmandcreative at redearththeatre.com. So that's lovely. And on Thursday, we've got another session with Rosie on music. Um, music and theatre. So that's our last session with her. So if you want to do a bit more about music and theatre, let us know. Um, so folks, thank you very much. And um, all I need to say is go well and stay safe.